Dream and I started basically naive and afraid. Let's start a church. Oh, that's a good idea. Let's do that. How do you do that? There's churches everywhere. Why would God want another church? I don't have to understand that. God called us to start this church. Just as long as you can hear God, then you, you just follow him. He'll fill in the blanks, right? Pastoring. How about TV costing millions? We did, I mean, we knew nothing about television. Did not want to do television. I mean, but we said yes. Building million-dollar building. I mean, yes, let, we're bored. Let's build buildings. Let's raise millions of dollars. Come on, folks. I mean, God calls you to things. He calls you. He leads you. And I want, to, I want to mention this. You know, when you talk about finding your destiny and doing spiritual purposes with our life, so many Christians have this mindset that they're looking for the big thing. You know, I'm called to do this. I'm called to go to Africa and, and build all these orphanages. And that's maybe true, but you don't get there starting there. You start today. And so the problem I find is that in our American culture, we have a bystander spectator sport called church. You see, because we are all raised in the American church model, which we had paid clergy, paid staff that were to be the spiritual people doing ministry while the church people showed up as an event on Sunday morning. We never got it right. You see, the church, you're the church. And see, the pastor's your coach. He's the one that prepares and teaches and trains you to go out into works of service. God has prepared for you, the church. See, everyone's called to ministry. But because we were not taught that, what happens when we have a stirring of the Holy Spirit, we come to Christ, we think, wow, I just, I, I, I just really feel a call to ministry. I must be called to be a pastor because it's the only picture you ever had of what spiritual looks like in the American bystander church. So when we talk about purposes, people get nervous. I must have missed it. I'm not doing anything great. I should, well, you know, I must have missed God. I should, I be should, yeah, you need to do something great, like paying your bills on time, taking care of your family, loving your wife today. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Listen, you got to be faithful today to ever find tomorrow. You want to do something great? Start doing it great right now. People say, well, I don't know my purpose. Yeah, you do. You're breathing. That's start there. In other words, you take care of today, God speaks to you. He knew where Joseph was in prison. He knew where Moses was on the backside of the desert. You don't have to get nervous. I must have missed God. I'm not doing anything for God. Well, just start today. Today is always today, and God will lead you step by step. Just say yes. It's not complicated. It does take faith. Okay, you with me? Are you with me? Yes. Okay. I want to read a story to you that helped me illustrate this, this whole lesson today. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 1, the story of King Saul. It's a sad story, by the way. And Samuel the prophet, let's begin to read in verse number 1. Samuel said to Saul, I am the one the Lord sent to anoint you king over his people, Israel. So listen now to the message from the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty says. I will punish the Amalekites for what they did to Israel when they waylaid them as they came out of Egypt. Now go attack the Amalekites and totally destroy everything that belongs to them. So, verse 7, King Saul attacks the Amalekites. But we find in verse 8, he takes the king Agag alive. And then down through that story, we find they took all of, the, all of the great livestock, the cattle, the sheep, everything. They took it with them back to the camp. Then the word of the Lord came to the prophet Samuel, verse 10. I regret that I made King Saul, or Saul king, because he has turned away from me and has not carried out my instructions. Now underline this word, turned away from me and has not carried out my instruction. King Saul attended all of the offerings and the worship services, so to speak. He was still attending church. But he had turned, the Bible says he turned away from God because of what? Because he missed the worship service? Because of what? He has not carried out my instruction. Well, pastor, I love church, man. Worship's awesome, man. We, don't, we never miss church. But are you obedient? Are you passionate? Or is this just a date and a time on your calendar? So Samuel, the prophet, wants to speak to King Saul. Verse 12, early in the morning, Samuel gets up and goes and he meets Saul. But he is told Saul has gone to Carmel. There he has set up a monument in his own honor and has turned and gone down to Gilgal. 
we got a problem. When Samuel reached Saul, Saul said to him, The Lord bless you. I have carried out the Lord's instructions. Are you deceived today? Saul is obviously deceived. He thinks he has carried out the instructions of God because he went through the motions of them, but did not carry out the detail of them. So he goes on. Samuel says, well, what's this bleeding of sheep that I hear and these cows I hear? Oh, Saul says, the soldiers did that. They brought these animals for offerings. And he goes on and Samuel says, stop, stop, stop. Let me tell you how it is. Enough. Let me tell you what the Lord said. And Saul says, tell me, probably thinking it's going to be something good, right? Samuel says, although you're once small in your own eyes, did you not become the head of the tribes of Israel? The Lord anointed you king over Israel, and he sent you on a mission. And what's the next word? Go. He sent him on a mission. He sent him on a mission. He had instruction, and he said, go, do the instruction. Verse 20. But I did obey the Lord, he said. I went on the mission that God assigned me. I, I did completely destroy the Amalekites. But Samuel said, and these words are probably pretty famous. Verse 22, does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much in, as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice. To heed or listen to instruction and do it is better than offerings. For rebellion is like the sin of witchcraft or divination, and arrogance, like the evil of idolatry. Arrogance means you think you have a better way. You'll do it your way, not God's way. Because you've rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. Saul was disqualified. My prayer for all of us is we don't become disqualified, but that God promotes us, right? Acts chapter 13. So King Saul was, was taken from the kingship. Acts 13, 22. Paul is talking about the history of Israel in this chapter of Acts 13. After removing King Saul, God made David their king. God testified concerning David. I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. Well, pastor, you know I love God. I have a heart for God. If you have a heart for God, you're going to hate what God hates, you're going to love what God loves, and you're going to be passionate about seeing what God wants done, done. Wouldn't it be great if God testified about you? God testifies about, let's say, your name, that they will do everything I've asked them to do. They have a heart for me and my passion, and they dislike what I dislike, and they hate what I hate, and they will carry out my instructions. I can trust them with responsibility, thus they qualify for promotion. Now, friend, let me just bring this down to a more even natural level. Your employer wants to say the same thing about you, that you hate what they hate, you love what they love, and your intent is to prosper that company, and you qualify for promotion. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.